Sound Design. Yeah. Alright, this is a behind the scenes video for Priority Workshop Scene Sound. In the last video we looked at Module 2, and in this video I want to show you what's going on in Module 3. So we are in the aiming portion of the Sound System Tuning Roadmap, and this, all of these lessons are just about different ways to aim speakers, either as a solo unit or to combine them with other speakers. Now, as you can see, <laughs> Lesson 3 is kind of a monster. There, uh, I'm sorry, Module 3. There are a lot of lessons in here. Um, I just updated this a few months ago and added several more to make it more complete, to try and cover um, as many of the most common, most important uh, situations that I have run into. So, I can't go through them all very detailed, but I will go through them quickly just to give you an overview. So horizontal aim, basically how to aim any speaker, um, no matter where you are, no matter what the situation is. Triangles, yeah, uh, this is just a quick introduction to triangles, basically explaining that if you know um, any two pieces of information of a triangle, you can find out the third piece of information. So a lot of times, for example, we know the height of the speaker and the distance to the first row, but we don't know the distance from the speaker to the first row. Okay, so we can speed up our work by um, just knowing some basic principles about triangles. Vertical aim, so this is the corresponding horizontal aim, now vertical aim, and here I give you a formula for um, finding the vertical aim of any speaker as long as you know the front to back distance ratio of the audience plane you're trying to cover. Lesson 3.25, aim and slay of a coupled point source array. So if you don't understand all these words, don't worry about it. Um, I explain every new word that comes into the course here. And we even have a compiled glossary that you can access if you forget any of them or don't know any of them. And it's growing all the time. As we get into these lessons here, you'll see that more and more of them are just different kinds of arrays. Couple point source array, then we'll go to uncoupled, then point destination, and things like that. Okay, and each of them comes with potentially a formula or a technique, but none of the math is super complicated. Um, it's pretty easy stuff to wrap your head around. Lesson 3.27, aim and splay of an asymmetrical couple point source array. So what happens with the aim and splay of your uh, center cluster if you need to turn one of them down a little bit? Why would you need to turn one of them down a little bit? Well, what if the room is asymmetrical? We talked about this before, right? Put sound where there are people, not where they are not. So if you have a, you know, a cluster up here, but this room, side of the room is bigger than that side for whatever reason, maybe there's a bar over there, I don't know, um, then you might need to turn this one down, and then that's going to change the aim and display of your array a little bit. Um, and this is where we also get into talking about shrinkage, otherwise known as proportional change in coverage with level offset. When you start to learn about things like comb filtering, then you start to get really afraid of it. So what I try to talk about in this lesson is the trade-offs between an uncoupled point source and point destination array. And that's, it's just a fancy way of saying, hey, if you have uh, two mains, your left and right main on the side of each stage, like so many people do, what happens if you aim those in towards the center? What happens if you aim those straight down the middle? and what happens if you aim those out, okay? Lesson 3.35, how to aim and delay a loudspeaker. Yay! Lesson 3.4, find coverage angle and aim in one step. Okay, this is just a fun lesson where you get to learn how to use this calculator. You can put in a few pieces of information about your design if you know exactly where the speaker is gonna go and then find the um, coverage angle and aim. All right, here's where we get into designing our line arrays. The first step here is just automatic, and that's basically just using, learning how to use the auto splay and aim of your loudspeaker manufacturer's design software. Then we're gonna get into how to do that manually. And usually, I think most people use both. I would usually start by having the loudspeaker manufacturer software automatically aim and splay the array for me, and then I'll start making adjustments after that. I think in the next lesson we'll get into fine-tuning it. Yep, so 
multi-step process, right? A little bit complicated, but these are the trade-offs of being able to cover a huge long room with just one array. Um, now we're gonna start getting into the verification lessons. Verification is the most important thing to do on site. So many times I've gotten this wrong and I try to skip ahead and then the show starts and some of the speakers don't work because I did not verify them, something terrible like that. Okay, so just the lesson here is everything that you verify will work fine and there won't be any problem. Everything that you skip over and don't verify, there'll be some problem with. It just happens over and over again. All right, so we're gonna start by verifying our audio analyzer. We need to make sure that that's working first so we don't incorporate any problems with the audio analyzer into our system tuning. Then we're gonna verify the horizontal aim of a single speaker and then an entire array. Then we'll verti uh, verify the vertical aim of that single speaker or array. So this is when, these lessons are when we start putting microphones into the field, okay? Uh, so for example, in that last lesson, we would have a vertical top, vertical bottom, and on-axis measurement, and then compare those to find the optimal aim. Now you can see as we're getting to these lessons, lesson 3.9, verify splay for a symmetric coupled point source array. So now we're taking all of the things, all of the aims that we estimated basically in the first half of this module, and now we're verifying those. Why don't we do it all in one step? Well, you totally could. The reason that there are two steps is because the first half, the estimation half, you can do that at home, right? So the night before the show, or the week before, or whenever you're planning this, you can look at your design and you can say, okay, with this information, I can estimate that the aim and splay is gonna be like this. But then once you get in the field, you still need to verify that because there's all this uh, information like um, room reflections that are really um, more challenging for us to estimate and take into account in our designs without actually being in the room and taking real measurements. You can still do this course even if you don't have a room to test these all in. So the best way to do this course is to watch each lesson and then go out into the field and try it so you can actually get the things into your hands and into your brains and eyes and ears and everything and, and learn this stuff. But that could take a while. And if you're not a person that is out doing shows every day or maybe you're not doing shows that give you the opportunity to move speakers around and take measurements, you can still do this course because every lesson has at least two options for the homework assignment. And usually there's an option where you can go out into the field and verify this stuff and basically just report back, uh, take some photos, take some video, document your work out in the field, or you can do the same work in MapXT. So what I've noticed some students doing is they'll go all the way through the course just doing option B, uh, I'm sorry, option A, and t doing all of their work and practicing in their design software, and then they'll come back and do it again where they actually go out in the field and do the work. So that's one way to do it. Um, some people go back and forth. I just try to make this available because I know not everyone has the same resources. All right, lesson 3.93, verify spacing for a symmetrical uncoupled array. Exciting. And then we get into the asymmetrical uncoupled array. Ooh. In this lesson, for example, we're gonna talk a lot about relay speakers. So you might have a main speaker and then you've got a long room and you're gonna have to put a relay and a relay and a relay and you need those to all sort of connect seamlessly. So that's what these uh, asymmetrical uncoupled Array is talking about, and here we're just talking about the spacing. Now we're gonna get into verifying the aim and display of a line array. It's a pretty simple process, but I think maybe one that is potentially skipped over a lot because we have now in our design software for our speaker manufacturer, we have auto set aim and display. But once we get into the field, we still needed to verify that that actually worked. And so this is a process of just looking at um, microphone positions at our different zones and the crossover between them and making sure that they meet our design guidelines. And that's it, okay. <laughs> we made it to the end of module three. So as you can see, I had to put a lot of stuff in this one because we not only have the design and basically estimating a lot of this stuff, but then verification in the field. 
So that's module three. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about module four, EQ. Sound design. Yeah.